This video will explore Faraday's law in more detail. We will define a quantity called magnetic flux linkage and move on to state Faraday's law of induction. Afterwards, we will look at how to calculate the EMF induced from the motion of a conductor in a magnetic field, and we will solve some example questions involving Faraday's law. Recall that magnetic flux is a quantity that measures how much the magnetic field passes perpendicularly through a given area. If we have a rectangular loop of wire in a uniform magnetic field, then the magnetic flux through the loop can be calculated with the following equation, where B is the magnetic flux density, A is the area of the given surface, and the angle theta is measured between the direction of the magnetic field and the direction normal to the given surface. To amplify electromagnetic effects, a singular loop of wire is often replaced with a coil of wire with n turns. The effect is that the magnetic flux through all of the turns will be n times as large as for a single turn. Moreover, we define this quantity n times phi as the magnetic flux linkage, and this is equal to the product of the number of turns n and the magnetic flux. Magnetic flux linkage plays a central role in electromagnetic induction. The law that governs the magnitude of the induced EMF is Faraday's law of induction, which states that the induced EMF is equal to the negative rate of change of magnetic flux linkage with time. The negative sign encompasses Lenz's law, and shows that the EMF is induced in the opposite direction to the change causing it, but in this video, we will be primarily focused on the magnitude of the induced EMF. This expression shows that a change in magnetic flux with time will always create an induced EMF, but it is important to note that a changing flux does not necessarily induce a current. There will only be an induced current if there is a closed conducting loop or coil of wire. If we substitute the equation for magnetic flux into Faraday's law, we see that magnetic flux can be changed in many different ways. We could have a time varying magnetic field which changes the magnetic flux density with time. The area of the loop could change with time. Or we can rotate the loop which will change the angle between the magnetic field and area with time. Alternatively, any combination of these changes will cause a change in flux. We will now consider an example question on Faraday's law of induction. A rectangular coil with 30 turns is placed in a uniform magnetic field of strength 0.7 tesla that is parallel to the axis of the coil. The coil rotates for 0.25 seconds so that it faces a direction that is at an angle of 60 degrees from its original orientation. Calculate the magnitude of the induced EMF in the coil. We begin by substituting in the expression for magnetic flux linkage in Faraday's law. The magnetic flux density and area of the coil remain constant with time, so these variables can be taken out as constants. The only variable that changes the magnetic flux with time is the angle theta between the magnetic field and the normal to the plane of the coil. We can now substitute in the relevant values. The number of turns n is 30 and the magnetic flux density B is 0.7 tesla. The area of the rectangular coil is given by the product of the length 0.60 meters and width 0.35 meters. For the change in cosine theta divided by change in time term, the axis of the coil is initially parallel to the magnetic field, so theta is initially 0 degrees. It then rotates 60 degrees, so the final value of theta will be 60 degrees and this happens in a time of 0.25 seconds. Since we are only interested in the magnitude, completing this calculation will give us a value of 8.82 volts for the induced EMF in the coil. We will now consider the following scenario. We have a straight conductor of length L that can move on conducting rails, which together form a conducting loop. This conductor will move into a region in which a uniform magnetic field B that acts into the page is present. If the rod moves to the right with some velocity V along the conducting rails, the area of the conducting loop will increase with time T. This means that the magnetic flux in the loop is changing and an EMF will be induced. In addition, since we have a closed conducting loop, 
a flow of charge will occur due to the induced EMF, resulting in a current being induced in the circuit, and it will have an anti-clockwise direction due to Lenz's law. If we delve into this in more detail, in a time interval delta t, the rod has moved the distance v times delta t, so the change in area of the conducting loop delta a will be given by this distance v delta t multiplied by the length of the rod l. We can now determine an expression for the magnitude of the induced EMF using Faraday's law. The magnetic flux density and angle remain constant with time, so these variables can be taken out as constants in Faraday's law. To simplify this expression further, we note that we have a singular loop of wire, so n equals 1, and by taking the normal of the conducting loop to be in the same direction as the magnetic field, theta will also be 0 and so cosine theta will be 1. If we now substitute our expression for delta A, the delta t's cancel out in the numerator and the denominator, and we are left with the following equation from the data booklet. This is known as emotional EMF, because the EMF has been induced as a result of the motion of a conducting rod in a magnetic field. Moreover, this EMF is induced across the length of the conductor, even in the scenario where there is no closed loop and we just have a moving conductor in a magnetic field, the EMF would still be induced across the ends of the rod. Note that this equation is true as long as the magnetic field, velocity and length of the conductor are mutually perpendicular. Let's apply this understanding to an example question. A conducting rod moves on conducting rails that form a loop with a resistance of 0.05 ohms. Suppose that the conducting rod has a length of 0.2 meters and is pushed to the right at a constant speed of 1.5 meters per second. If the magnetic flux density is 0.8 tesla, calculate the magnitude of the induced EMF and the induced current. The magnetic field, velocity, and length of the rod are all perpendicular to each other, so we can use the motional EMF equation to calculate the induced EMF. After making the relevant substitutions, we find that the induced EMF is equal to 0.24 volts. To determine the induced current, recall this equation that relates the resistance of a conductor to the potential difference across it and the current through it. Through rearrangement of this equation, we can find the induced current from the values of the induced EMF, 0.24 volts, and the resistance of the loop, which is given as 0.05 ohms so we find that the induced current is equal to 4.8 amps. We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. We define magnetic flux linkage as a quantity for the magnetic flux through a coil with n turns, given by the following equation. This quantity is used in Faraday's law of induction, which is used to calculate the induced EMF from the negative rate of change of magnetic flux linkage with time. We then saw that the motion of a conductor in a magnetic field can induce an EMF between the ends of the conductor. This is known as a motional EMF, and can be calculated from the magnetic flux density, speed of the conductor, and length of the conductor in the magnetic field. This now concludes this video on Faraday's law of induction. Thank you for watching.